shut up and sit down. Hey guys, I'm Big Mac's Workshop Painting Studio and it's a Ford Wheel Pre-8 all today. Uh, Going to be also doing a little bit of work on the Power Armoured one, as this is for a commission. Uh, as you can see, there's loads of detail, the engraving on the model is outstanding. Really nicely detailed model and very cool pose as well. It's nice to have a sling um, storm bolt on the uh, Terminator, which is a, a nice interesting twist, twist to the uh, standard Terminator figures. So, as you can see, we're doing a bit of airbrush work at the beginning of the uh, tutorial. Uh, this is German uh, Red Brown uh, by Vallejo. Uh, get a full coverage of this, basically it's the base layer of um, the entire paint job. So now I'm going in from underneath with a Rhinox Hide. This is going to give it a real nice depth, um, add some nice shading to the, uh, to the, to the reds. And uh, once you start adding the reds over the top of it, it's really going to make, make the uh, armour look interesting. So now uh, from about 45 degrees this is corn red which is really really vibrant on this because uh, there's such dark brown reds uh, that this corn red really does st stand out and it really does uh, allow for us to play around with the colours and now we're going from directly ab above it with Antares red which is a nice uh, orangey red uh, quite a nice highlight and it's really going to make the, uh, the details pop out as we've said before, we always you can always do um, replicate any uh, paint job done with an airbrush by hand, uh, and that's all the airbrush work done. So now I'm going to black out all the detail work. Uh, this is going to give us a nice base layer for a lot, for any of the uh, paint work, uh, the trim, uh, the uh, any of the metals as well. And now we're going on to the trim, which is going to be same as the uh, inner uh, workings of weak spots, and this is black metal. Uh, by scale 75. As you see, taking your time, uh, w when you've uh, already got the base colours down you need to take a little bit more time um, than I would do if I were painting by hand because obviously all the highlights are already down. But I'm just keeping this net layer nice and neat and I'm really going to start bringing out uh, the individual pieces of the armour. So on to uh, some more decorative uh, plating and this is decayed metal. Again, scale 75, and as you can see, it's a real nice base layer for uh, any kind of brass or bronze or even golds. Uh, just taking my time, there's a really nice skull feature on the center of its torso, which is what I'm working here. And as you can see, it's just uh, adding some extra uh, color to the model, um, really bringing it to life a little bit. So, what would a Chaos Lord be without skulls? And this is 40k, so there's skulls everywhere, as always. Uh, we'll start off with Terra Earth. Uh, by Vallejo. Uh, sometimes you khaki as well. Um, nice Panzer Aces colour there. And just getting a nice base layer and on all the candles and his skull work. The um, leather wrapping on the uh, mace, power mole, uh, crozis, whatever you want to call it, is uh, based in Arbuckles Brown by Scale 75. Quite a red brown. Uh, it's also nice and dark. I'm going to start. Um, bringing it out and make it more interesting uh, as we go on. And these are the heads from the Power Armor version. Um, with both Power Armor and Terminator sets, you get both heads, which is really cool. And um, starting off with a base layer of Cadia flesh uh, on the uh, unarmed, unpa unhelmeted head. So, it's going to start throwing some washes in and. Uh, a good good place to start is Agrax. So all the um, browns, all the tan colours, any of the golds, all getting uh, a nice thin down Agrax wash. Uh, it's all over all over the model at the uh, relevant places. And onto the uh, open head. The open heads have been washed in Reetland Flesh Shade. Um, you know the reasons behind this one. It's a really good call for it. It just breaks it up a little bit. So, start to add some proper highlights in now. So, I'm cleaning up the um, the skull work with Xandri, sorry, with Karak Stone. And as you can see, I'm just I'm going to start leaving some of the uh, the darker colours and the wash showing through a little bit, uh, just in the most deep places. I'm just going to build these uh, colours up really nicely. So now I'm adding some Shabti into the uh, Karak Stone. And this is going to uh, start lightening up that uh, bone colour 
Uh, as you can see, I'm taking my time with it. Uh, it's a nice little feature on the, on the armor. And uh, just bringing some of them colors up nice and uh, gentle. Uh, making sure that the paint I'm using is quite thin so we don't get that uh, lumpy texture. So now I'm using Screaming Skull. Uh, this is not going to be the uh, top highlight if you don't need it to be. Uh, you can always add in ivory as well. Uh, this is going across the brow, across the top of the head, where the light hits first. And just generally um, bringing out extra parts, parts of the detail. So now I'm using Zandri Dust. And um, this is going on all the um, the purity seal tapes, all that sort of uh, good stuff. As you can see, it's just going to um, I'm sort of feathering it uh, rather than painting it on, on a flat um, on a flat line. Uh, this is to uh, add a little bit of extra texture to it as well, so otherwise it look a bit dull. And I've added some shabby bone into the uh, mixture for the uh, book on his shoulder pad. I thought the addition of a book on a shoulder pad is a really nice touch. Uh, it did really make the um, model stand out a little bit from uh, from uh, the, from the crowd. So highlighting up silver. This is gunmetal we're using. Uh, now you could I could have gone with a, a gold, but uh, I wanted the um, armor um, uh, with the silver just to, as it's quite quite a warm t um, tone model. I wanted a, a cool trim uh, just to uh, um, make the uh, model a little bit more um, neutral on the heat aspect, or so, uh, I suppose. And I'm also highlighting these on the second layer with um, steel, uh, using the side of a brush where possible, because it just gives you a little bit more control. Uh, control. Um, this is obviously going to have a wash at some point, uh, but we want to be as neat as possible so uh, the wash doesn't have to do any extra work when you need it to. So now I'm going over with really thin down Null Oil. I'm going to add a couple of layers of this on. Uh, I want the uh, Null Oil to be very ac I need I needed to be very accurate. So it took a little while longer than normal. Uh, as obviously uh, you don't want the black going all over red where of, uh, uh, if at all possible. So just uh, took my time, use a really thin down layer, and just uh, added a couple of extra layers to it. This is, adds more depth, and as it, as it dries, you can build up that depth from the uh, wash on the top of uh, into the recesses. So back onto the tr um, the fancy trim now. So across the mace, um, any of, uh, around the bases of the um, candles. That big skull motif he's got on the centre of his um, centre of his uh, where his belt buckle would be. I'm using old, old copper. Nice, vibrant colour. Uh, goes really well over the um, over the um, decayed metal. And now it is Victorian brass going over the top of the the other colours. Still leaving a little bit of the uh, darker colour uh, showing through. Uh, this just adds more depth to the model. Uh, it also makes the uh, colours a little bit more interesting when you start leaving. Uh, Tiny slivers of a um, different colour uh, knocking up. Uh, it's just uh, paint it as you feel would na uh, the highlights where they would naturally fall. So now I've added a uh, Agrax Earth Shade again. Uh, it's going to bring the colours together. Um, it allows you to uh, smooth out some of those uh, iffy spots where you've uh, got the blending a little bit wrong, looks a little bit ropey. So this is a good opportunity to tidy up some of that. Also adds, allows you to add extra depth in the places where it just needs a little bit more. So Victorian brass now. Um, as you can see, it's a real vibrant colour. Uh, works really well for this particular um, power mall, uh, which again is engraved to a massive, deg massive degree. This model, of, I've got to say, they really have um, produced a couple of good ones on the uh, word bearer Praetorians. So now what we're doing is we're going to add some kind of edge, edge highlights now with the Amber Alchemy. The Amber Alchemy is quite a light, um, quite a light gold, uh, so it really does work uh, work well for this. I use the um, Vileo, uh, sorry, the Scale 75 ranges um, because it mean uh, there's such a nice colour range you don't have to mix paint so much. 
uh, which really does give you a lot more uh, opportunity to um, get some nice subtle highlights uh, without having to uh, spend a load of time getting a mixture exactly right. And now just a couple of touch highlights with uh, Moonstone Alchemy, uh, which is a nice top highlight colour for any um, golden metal work. Now a little bit of uh, finishing off now, really thin down Agrix Earthshade, I'm just going to start applying it directly into the most uh, deep recesses, uh, any areas where again, as I have said, are a little bit patchy, I need, uh, just needed to balance out the colours a little bit, and this is just going to uh, finish off any of the highlighting work. On to the uh, open helmets again. Open faces again, sorry. Uh, this is Cadian Flesh with Resurrection Flesh. Uh, just starting to bring up those uh, colours in a nice smooth manner. What uh, we're going to do, we're going to leave some of the darker shades showing through a little bit, as always, but uh, we're going to bring those colours up to a nice crisp highlight. You've got to get some really nice transitions. Now, you can spend as much time as you want on faces. You would really enjoy it. If you if you uh, feel the need, you can really go over the top. Um, and... Uh, really make these uh, uh, faces look a lot more interesting. Now this is uh, Resurrection Flesh on its own now. As you can see I'm just bringing up those highlights to it uh, a little bit more. And I'm just going to keep on uh, doing that until I'm, uh, until I'm happy with the, uh, the overall uh, shade of the skin. So now I'm having some Harvest of Flesh. This is a very pale colour and just uh, start focusing on the most extreme areas um, across the brow, bridge of the nose, uh, that sort of area, maybe a little bit on the chin, uh, across the cheekbones. And uh, also taking uh, this opportunity to use it as a as kind of a base layer for the, for the teeth I suppose, uh, as it's uh, the teeth are uh, quite nicely uh, sculpted so I wanted to get at least something on them. So that's pretty much um, this at this stage we're pretty much just doing harvester now, uh, very pale colour, um, starting to add, add, it, add it to the uh, ex most extreme areas of the uh, of the face and just uh, just making, making those highlights look a little bit more interesting, just building up ever so slowly. And now I've added a touch of Screaming Skull uh, for the final highlights, this is uh, the Terminator uh, open face, uh, not as nice as the um, power armor one to be fair, um, but it's still not a bad sculpt. So uh, I did get it painted up just in case um, uh, the owner actually wanted to use this uh, helmet for something uh, in his collection later. So now we're going on to the edge highlights of the power armor. Uh, there's going to be a couple of uh, couple of edges doing this, using a flat of a bush as much as possible. This is Aldebaran red. A nice orangey red really works well over the uh, colours we've got for the base of the armour. Uh, and it's just going to start bringing those edges out uh, really nice and sharply. Um, while still staying um, with the right sort of tone as the, uh, uh, the armour uh, would dictate. So once we've gone around with the Elder Baron on all the edges, now we're going back over again with uh, Mars Orange. And this is just going to uh, brighten up those highlights a little bit more. And uh, just to uh, make them pop out just a little bit, um, you know, make, make the uh, model really stand out and look particularly nice. Uh, onto the tabard, loin cloth or thingy, whatever it is. Uh, this is a mixed. It obviously, it was uh, based up in black uh, when we did the uh, uh, black black and out step earlier. This is now a case of mixing dark reaper and black. Now this is the same way as I did the uh, Legion of the Damned in a uh, video a while back. I'm going fairly uh, loosely over the um, cloths at the minute. 
just to uh, add some nice highlights in it but we're going to start really thinning uh, thinning those layers down with uh, more Dark Reaper as you can see I'm just uh, starting to really focus the positioning of the uh, highlights now uh, to wherever the uh, leading edges are it's going to start making the black look a lot more interesting so after that it is pretty much pure Dark Reaper I'm just starting to really notice, um, pay attention to the uh, most extreme corners now. Uh, any of the uh, obvious high spots, um, just to really make it that, make those uh, highlights look uh, interesting, look nice, and keep them keep them neat. Now I've added a touch of Hellbound Flesh. Uh, this is a kind of a greeny blue colour. Uh, but it really does um, add to the Dark Reaper quite nicely just to allow you to get those nice pointed highlights right on the edges. Uh, going quite sparingly on this, we don't want like, too much of it as uh, it, would, it would stand out a little bit too much. But it just softens up those uh, highlights just, to, just enough just to make them look right. So I decided I was going to do Green Flame. Um, just giving you an idea of what the uh, base layer is, it's boreal green, it's kind of a greeny blue um, but once I've got it based down with this colour, it's just I just wanted a nice dark uh, greeny colour uh, to start off with and so I'm going to go back over with the airbrush just to finish up the flames uh, and that will be something I uh, pick up on a, a video at a later date um, to uh, get the base, uh, get, uh, get the methods on how I did that and there you are, that's a Warbearer Preator it's a beautiful figure, a really uh, really impressed by uh, the figure. So I had an oil wash in, I made sure I um, did a, a quite heavy oil wash uh, so the engravings would, be st uh, would stand out nicely. Uh, as you can see I uh, did some airbrush work for the flames uh, just to make it look a lot more interesting and get that kind of groovy OSL look uh, effect over it. And there you go. Uh, I fully enjoy this model. Um, really, really nice figure to, uh, to paint a lot of interesting details and it really does uh, capture the uh, whole world but word bearers sort of pre warrior priest sort of a say so uh, very uh, pleased with how that looks anyway guys thank you as always for watching and listening to me waffle on for the last 20 minutes or so please hit like and subscribe um, do hope you enjoy this video and um, remember to make sure you've got the bell notification um, checked as well just to make sure that you get information on all our videos if you'd be interested in checking out Patreon, please check out Patreon as well. And a massive thank you to our um, Patreons. Your names are going up now. Huge thank you to you guys. For that. We couldn't do this without you. And uh, also, if you're interested in checking out uh, Element Games or the Sheffield Outposts, they're really cool guys. Uh, give you store credit and um, discounts on all your uh, purchases, which also gives us, uh, if you go through our affiliate link, it'll uh, give us a little bit of a... Um, a little bit of bunts too just to uh, help everyone out anyway guys hope you enjoyed it and i'll catch you in the next one bye bye